Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Awaken the World. We are live right now on this very last day of July in the year 2021. Going back to the beginning, the beginning of everything. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, here live on the Awaken the World group page. Hello, hello, hello. So, uh... Big important announcement coming up next video. I'm not going to give you any clues or hints about it. You're just going to have to be there. Um, and uh, I haven't decided yet, but I, I may make the video unavailable after the live. So if you don't catch it live, you don't get to know. <laughs> Why? Well, you know, um, no particular reason outside of the fact that I can be an imp sometime and I haven't done anything impish today. Actually, that's not true. I haven't done enough impish things today. So, uh, first of all, as always, let me express my love for each and every one of you. I, I really pray that you understand that no matter what's going on in your life, it's actually quite okay. And, and this can be a real struggle for a lot of people to, to really understand the, the, the depths of what that really means. And, you know, just before we get into that, and I think that's a good place to begin from, I want to make sure that if you're living as we are in this heat wave right now that's going on yet again, and granted the temperatures aren't as high, but they're still in a they're still causing dangerous conditions inside of um, you know apartments and, and things like that where people can't easily open up their windows at night due to the smoke. We, we have uh, pretty much the worst air quality on the planet here right now. And if you're anywhere around here or you're experiencing that wildfire smoke, you know I, I, I just, Pray that you take simple steps to try and protect yourself wherever possible. You know, you can get an N99 mask and, and wear that. And I know no one wants to mask up anymore, but for the sake of your lungs and the long-term effects that that smoke and toxin are going to have on your lungs, uh, please con consider wearing one if you're out and about. And certainly don't be exercising outside right now. It's one of the most foolish things you could do to yourself. So let, let's start at that kind of obvious spot. You know, let's kind of go back to the beginning and, and try to get a grasp so we can really understand what it means that we live in an absolutely perfect creation. And I can empathize. Uh, why? Because there are times in my life and there are still times right now where I, even though I'm not struggling with it, the, the two truths that stand there side by side, that, that really can stand there side by side, are being buffeted by my own attachment to the uh, relative plane. And that's because we're on the relative plane. And because we're on that relative plane, we think in terms of relative things. And we have to constantly unmind ourselves of that. So what do we mean about a relative thing? Well, we mean, you know, if it's cold, then it can't be hot. Right? That, 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 that's a relative. It, it, relativity here is all about comparison. So in, in the realm of you know, all things being perfect, even though we're witnessing the beginning of the downfall of civilization as we know it, like, like the oops finally went over that last little bit of the cliff edge sort of deal. Um, even though that's causing immense suffering and that suffering is going to grow and there's going to be more deaths and, and more issues that a lot of people will not make it through, we have to be willing to, to see that both of them can actually sit together side by side. It can be both horrible, 
and we can understand that it's the play we're in that's horrible right the, the, this is what we have done and there's no judgment from creation on that okay there, there's you know i had a talk with a a very conservative i'm, I'm going to say intensely christian woman who um i happen to know i've helped her with a few of her health issues and you know we were talking there on the street and she said to me she said you know a lot of people in my church think that this is the apocalypse. This, th these are the end times, like it's actually happening right now, sort of deal. And th there's a, a lot of sentiment towards that sort of thinking, you know, that, that this is somehow the beginning of some sort of end. And, and I assured her that, that it wasn't. And that for anyone to, to wish for, upon that to to you know to want that sort of suffering for the the amount of people who would suffer in in trade for some supposed perfection is going to bring a thousand years from now it just doesn't make sense to me you know we, we are in charge of our own destiny and and that's where the perfection comes in every single natural consequence to our behavior offers us the solution without judgment right so 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 let's look at and this can be a touchy one for some people and if it's touchy for you i'm very sorry but let's look at uh overeating so you know when kelly and i order a pizza from somewhere the pizza is typically sliced up into um, uh, uh, about 16 pieces. And, and, and that's enough to give us four good solid meals at a minimum. Because the most pizza we would ever eat would be two pieces of pizza eat, each. And a lot of times we only eat one piece of pizza and maybe a salad or something else. But if I were to continue to gorge on an entire pizza by myself the consequences of my actions are made perfect i i'm 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 getting fat i'm getting in a shape i'm putting myself at risk i'm also putting my um uh, pocketbook at risk at the same time as the pizza dude is driving a brand new ferrari because i've ordered so much pizza you see what i mean the, the perfection is built into it and, and that is, believe it or not, a loving perfection. So we, we need not look for the reasons why. All we need to do is look at the reaction that we're naturally seeing from creation. And I don't like to look at the word and say consequence. Because it's, it's not really a consequence. It's just, it's an echo back. You know, whatever we're putting out of the, out there in thought, word, and deed are like vibrational waves that travel through creation and they bounce back to us at some point and we begin to reap the results. So in that way we can see how you can have, you know, the, the suffering that's going on in the world right now and, and the need to to do something about it, the need to mitigate it in some way. Alongside that higher overview that actually this will be perfectly okay ultimately. It really will. So, as I said, um, we have a special announcement that I'm going to be making next video. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what it's about. Uh, what we're really going to talk about tonight is going back to the beginning and when i say going back to the beginning in this case i'm really talking about our children you know they they're they are the vessel through which you know we meet our own future and when you understand that you know in your own reincarnations that that you are also a child over and over again we need to lay into human consciousness as much as possible. The, the, the type of thinking, the, the type of mindset that that egoic cloud of humanity is going to be imparting upon 
children who are coming into the world. And, and that's really how it happens. You know, a lot of people struggle to understand why, you know, one mother can have three children and all three of them, the, their temperament is so polarized from each other, it's not even funny. And, and that's part of that, that, that journey that, that we take on a flavor to ourselves. And, you know, we, we still have an opportunity to reflavor those children coming into the world and, and, and maybe remember ourselves. You know, be, be able to recall ourselves these commandments if you will now i came upon this post and it was called the the 10 native american commandments and i always chuckle at that sort of thing because in reality it it it, it the, the, the person I, i'm sure an unintentionally uh baseline racist sort of idea to that i mean for one the native american uh indians are a diverse uh, mass of peoples. The, 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 there's not one Native American. The, there, there's, a, there's an entire slew of different cultures within that. But I, I did really enjoy the commandments themselves. And going back to the beginning, you know, the things we're going to remind ourselves of, of uh, on a daily basis... Because really, that's all we have left. You know, there's, there's no mass of change going to come anymore as far as what we're going to do to sort of fix this. We're in this for the long haul now, and a lot of that's going to be tough. And one of the ways that we can retain the balance and the mindset and that higher vibrational state that's going to be necessary to, to get through those things that are coming would be to begin to embody or, or, or to try and imbue those into our children and, of course, ourselves. So treat the earth and all that dwell thereon with respect. Now, now this is a big one that we never really learned, obviously. It's pretty damn clear. But we can certainly start to teach it to our children. And I got to say, I'm a little disappointed at the number of uh, violent children that I see who are freely throwing rocks at, at birds and, 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 and stomping on bugs when they see them and, and trying to kill a bee when, when, it, when it gets too close. And we need to imbue into our children and, of course, remind ourselves of the, the realization that we need to treat the earth and all the species that dwell here, everything that is here, with respect, because we need it all. It's all part, part of an, a, a very finely tuned machine that allows us to survive here. And we're really doing a number on the machine. The second, you know, commandment, if you will, is... Remain close to the Great Spirit. Now, when I think about this, I, I'm not always, uh, you, you know, meditation for me, to be honest with you. But at the same time, it's not really about you sitting in meditation or about you, you know, uh, attempting to have that communion. It's about reminding yourself on as often as need be, but many times a day, that you are indeed part and parcel of that great spirit. You are indeed part of that wondrous whole. And that even though there may be things in your experience right now that you're struggling with, this closeness to that great spirit, to that divine consciousness, is is the real it's what you are and what you're part of and you are whole and complete in that at all times 
show great respect for your fellow beings. This is becoming tougher and tougher as more of our fellow beings begin to act in more insane ma manner. I mean, uh, I, I do understand that. It, it, I struggle myself. You know, I'm a very precise person and, and I, I, I struggle with, uh, you know, what I have to remind myself is, is idiotic behavior, not idiots. And that's a big thing to pay attention to. We owe every other being respect because every other being is part of us. Because we are part of that one whole. And even if that other being is in, you know, I, I need to smack myself on the head with this a few times too every once in a while. Even if that other being is, is, is contributing to, to cutting down the rainforest here, our, our inland rainforest, or a rainforest anywhere else in the world, or, or you, you know, doing something else immensely harmful to the whole. There's more going on than what we see on the surface. And God is still there too. That divine consciousness that manifests all of us that, that, that doesn't vacate someone because they murder somebody. They are still there. That divine spirit is still within them, is still them. And it's for us to, uh, to, to come to understand the why and how of it. Work together, together for the benefit of all humankind. One of the things that's going on in the world right now is more and more separation. Instead of seeing more mixing of culture, we're, we're, we're literally becoming more separated from each other. And I understand when people get fearful and worried, they, they tend to run to the most familiar thing. But... We are stronger together as a whole. And every part of us is going to be needed if we're going to get through this. We, we, we can't all turn our backs on what's going on in the world any longer and say, well, someone else or some other organization or some government will deal with this. We have to learn to work together. You know, it's, it's a lot more fun to play together than it is to make war together. And it's a lot cheaper to play together. And then all that money that we would use to make war could go to saving ourselves from the climate disaster that we've made. That's here right now. Give assistance and kindness wherever needed. You know, th this one sounds like an obvious one, but we, we have to be very careful in understanding that, you know, assistance and kindness not be about any sort of big act. It can be the simple act of a smile. Assistance and kindness is more about a state of your personal being, a state of understanding that in every encounter, you're meeting a persona of God. You're meeting one of the many faces of the divine character. How do you treat that divine self that's interacting with you? How do you approach that sort of engagement? Do what you know to be right. You know, I've never struggled with this one, but I've certainly struggled with the results of what can happen to you when you do what you know to be right. And I just want to remind all of you that doing what you know to be right doesn't mean anyone else is going to agree with you. It doesn't even mean that anyone will be happy with you about it. What it does mean, though, is you're going to be staying loyal and true to the only thing in all creation that you're called upon to be, and that is to yourself. 
your whole self, all of yourself. Look after the well-being of mind and body. This is a tough one, you know, I, I, I'm not perfect in, in my own regimen, you know, and, and part of that is because I've already been dead a few times, I know what's waiting, I'm in my 60s, uh, you know, I, I'm in the twilight years of my life. <laughs> yeah, right, no hope, I'm sure. <laughs> Gonna be around way too long. I already kind of figured that one out. When we're talking about well-being of mind and body, we're talking about doing those things that enliven us. So, you know, eat as healthy as possible. Don't beat yourself up if you have a cookie and the cookie's not a healthy cookie like our cookies. You know, um, you, you know, go ahead and chomp on a hamburger if you must every once in a while. Just make sure you apologize to every cow you see for at least a week afterwards. No matter what it is, care for yourself. In other words, understand when your own thinking processes are beginning to do yourself harm. Right? And be willing to do something about that. Understand when the, 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 the energy you're putting into your body is, is not positive, uplifting, enlivening energy but perhaps dead energy that you found in a cardboard box in the frozen food section. And, you know, don't beat yourself up. Just understand what it does to you. Dedicate a share of your efforts to the greater good. You know, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Bible and and in the Catholic faith especially, and in a number of other practicing religious faiths, the concept of tithing, the, the concept of sharing a part of your profits, a, a, a part of your cash flow or goods flow with the whole. Why? To the greater good. So, so it, it, it's, it's good that you're doing well, but it's even better. It, it's, even, it's even gooder still. <laughs> if you're willing to dedicate a share of your efforts towards the whole, well, what does that really mean? It, it, it means that you understand that you actually wouldn't have anything if there wasn't a, all the rest of the whole there for, for you to get your share from, right? I mean, if you're the only person on the planet, you're not going to earn yourself very much money. You'll have everything you need, I'm sure. And you won't have to give away any of it. But I think you're going to get very lonely very quickly. Be truthful and honest at all times. I, I'm not even talking about other people because that is not where it needs to begin. Okay, everyone knows that the main reason we're not honest with other people around ourselves is fear. And the main reason we're not honest with ourselves is that same fear or guilt. Be truthful and honest at all times to oneself. Now, th that can get you killed. <laughs> it can get you thrown in prison, it can get everything taken from you, it can turn your life into a miserable living hell. It's really your choice. You know, most times, the worst things that happen is you get excommunicated from your family for the next 50 years, which I guess compared to being shot dead is probably, probably better. I mean, I would take being shot dead, I think. <laughs> Bottom line is, is be truthful and honest to yourself. You know, understand that you are the source of your creation. Your perceptive view of the universe is yours. Be true to it. And be true enough with yourself to be willing to adjust yourself when you see that you're not being fully honest. 
be willing and open enough to say, you know what, I'm not actually being fully honest with you. I, and I, I can't deal with that. So I, I want to restate what I've just said to you. That is the mark of a powerful being and a person who recognizes their own power. When they're willing to stand in their own truth and be honest at all times. Last but not least, this is a big one. And it's also the key to that whole thing about guilt. Taking full responsibility for your actions. And I'm going to expand that to say take full responsibility for your thoughts and your words and your deeds. Because only when you grab a hold of the entire arrow of creation can you actually begin to manifest the world of your perception that you want to see. So what, what do I mean by that, by taking full responsibility in order to grab that arrow of creation, thought, word, and deed, where anything in this universe that, that comes into being is a function of very focused thought, word, and deed. You think about the amount of thought, the amount of talking, the, the amount of physical uh, and, and other forms of action that undergo the creation of a new model car. It's an incredibly focused process. Well, your ability to focus, your ability to make sure your thoughts, words, and deeds are all in a straight line is your creative power. And that creative power works in co-creation with all of creation. Now, taking full responsibility doesn't absolve, that's not the way to see it. It, 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 it really, it, I would hope that it would absolve you of all guilt because you should never be carrying guilt. Guilt doesn't serve anything. It doesn't actually help anything at all except to become an, another form of egoic excuse another sort of cloak, another sort of protection mechanism. Taking full responsibility for your actions, for your thoughts, your words, and your deeds is an incredibly empowering event. It is a deep reminder within yourself that you are the source of your own power. Now, this gets difficult because, you know, I, I, I've had people say to me already, well, Garen, you know, looking at the world today, I would really like to manifest a world of green, a, a world of, of, you know, forests dripping with moisture and the lush smell of life itself and, and deep moss and, and clean oceans and, and abundant lakes. And I would like to manifest that. And, you know, I think the thing is, is we forget that our, those thoughts, words, and deeds aren't always lining up. So when we do that, we, we, we get these half-started sort of attempts, and we do that over and over again in our lives. So this is what I mean about going back to the beginning. It's about re returning to that base core set of values and focusing on living from that space because things are going to become more desperate you know but by the end of next summer if you're still having problems absorbing uh what i'm talking about you're going to be uh you know unfortunately upset <laughs> and there is still much yet to face this summer alone um we do have that big announcement on the next video. You're going to want to be here for it. And as I said, I'm playing around with the idea of, uh, you know, not leaving the video up, up after. Maybe it all depends how much of a mood I'm in. <laughs> I wish you to know from the bottom of my heart that the journey we've had to date over this last three years has been a wonderful journey. Um, it's been very empowering and, and uplifting 
to be able to serve so many people, to be able to help out in whatever way possible. Again, that's part of contributing to that whole, the oneness of us all. That's it. That's all tonight. I know it's a Saturday night, I think. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, giant cocktail parties and other events to go through um, or two. You know, as old folks, um, we're Kelly's going to work on crafts and I'm going to putter in my shop. <laughs> really not that bad of a life. Namaste. Have a beautiful Saturday night. Look forward to seeing you in a few days for a rather important announcement. And uh, that's it. Take care of yourself. Good night.